Hello YouTube. Uh, we had a couple of followers ask us a couple of questions about the log road setup that we have leading into the mill. Everything that you see component wise is dimensional. Uh, it's also all eastern white pine. Um, 8 by 8 for the big bunks, 2 by 8 for the cross members and ties. Uh, what we have is 12 foot sections going up and leading to the upper deck and both of them have a 13 degree miter on the post uh, they don't have a miter on the bottom they lead into the ground and sit below the log road that leads in so that way when we can't hook the logs in they have a small section that catches at the bottom and the logs won't move on us while we wrap them and then tie them into the winch for most of the high lumber, we used eight inch timber lock screws. They have a, a good biting capacity, plus they reach down into the meat of the timber. For the angle iron and some of the other more rugged connections, especially where the winch is, we used ledger lock screws. They're five and a half. You can find them at pretty much every hardware store. The winch at the end of the log road, usually roll it out. And then once we get the logs to the end of the log road, hook around the top, chain back in, and set for distance and then pull up to a point where we can get the logs onto the upper deck and then set them close enough to the mill so that we have clearance and then pop a couple blocks behind it so it doesn't roll off. Uh, we like to load two to three logs at any given time. Another important thing is, is we definitely have the cross bracing here. Uh, it helps a, a lot when you have logs coming up everything wants to push out. Um, it's very rare that we get a perfectly level log. They all have weird little pieces and nubs. So like I mentioned before, the winch is a Harbor Freight winch electric hoist. Uh, simple buttons in out. Uh, one of the key things is the chain break. And so in a couple of other setups that we've seen, the winch is mounted up high and when they're rolling logs in, what happens is, is the chain break wants to catch. And then if you're rolling multiple logs, the second log, the wire will come up and then wrap and you won't be able to pull it any further. And so what we did was we mounted the winch onto a piece of pipe and it's two inch, just, you know, standard steel pipe. And then we have heavy duty plumbing, um, banding cut to length and then all of these pieces are ledger locked in again three on the top three on the bottom and then the key component is this is locked into this eight by eight bunk which sits behind the vertical post under the upper log deck so for this piece of timber or this hoist to have any issues or pull out while we're pulling in some bigger bigger timber it would literally have to pull the entire road apart and that's kind of a key component uh, for how that's set up. Uh, huge shout out to Wes from uh, Fall Line Ridge. Uh, he has a great video about how to set up kind of a log road, especially if you have a portable mill or you want to have a static location. Uh, this, this log road that we have is more of a temporary log road and it works really well for us just because with all the snow in the winter, it's nice to get everything up and out, which is another reason why the mill is set so high. Again, in a temporary shed, we've had uh, the mill set on a slab at grade and the amount of snow that we get, it's just, it's a constant hassle to have to clean off, to torch, to de-ice. And so up, out and protected is, is definitely uh, the, the better way to go for us anyway. So this is kind of our second version of the sawmill setup. Um, I'm gonna move the camera again and show you the last component for rolling this into the mill. So when I mentioned before that we set the log road basically off of the height of the carriage and the mill road. When we're coming in, this is the lowest setting that we typically cut, which is three quarter on the mill. And you can see I've got room to clear as well as the bar guy has no issue clearing the log road. So one of the key components is making sure you're not too high. If anything, you'd rather be low. When we're rolling in, 
we typically use the log row blocks, which we just slide in and set before we log, roll the logs over. And one of the key things is make sure that you make the blocks a little bit smaller than the distance between the log road and the actual uh, LT15 bed because you're gonna forget to take them out. It, it happens all the time, more than I'd like to say. And you want the mill to actually be able to touch them and push and not get caught and then actually have the block slide out so you don't get the saw caught or have any issues with trying to back up the feed out of the log. Um, and then simply we set them aside once we get the log loaded up and then we're usually good to go. For us, most of the stuff we cut is oversized and 16 foot. Um, so what we did was we based the log road off of a 90 inch spread because the smallest log we'll put in here is eight feet. And so we can manage that and keep it on the road without it, you know, tilting off one side. But a 16 footer, especially when they're bigger than 30 inches, um, you just you want to have some room for them to hang off and then come into the mill and not have any issue with them you know walking one way as you wind it up the pine is is great i mean it's it's inexpensive as far as you know material to use um and it's it's rugged i mean we've had uh, i think the biggest log we've put up on this thing is a 42 inch shotgun maple that was 18 feet and i mean it was just it, it was heavy and i know that just because when the log truck tried to take it off and put it on the deck, you know, the crane was straining. Um, but yeah, we've used it for, it's gotta be five or six months. Haven't had any real issues with it. Um, it's a simple design. Uh, it's extremely rugged, like I said. Uh, we don't have a huge machine here, but we have a lot of timber to process and this was kind of the best solution that we have for now. And like I said, it's the second version. There'll be a version in the future that's better and yeah, we'll show you that one when we get to it. All right. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.